The team is back with another episode of Topical Explainers for the first chapter of CAEI DCC Computer Science. In this video, we will be discussing all about text, sounds, and images. And to clarify this topic and provide us with all the information needed, we have Abdullah here with us. Hello there. So we'll be discussing the third part of the first chapter now, that is the data representation chapter. The topic that we'll be talking about today is text and images. And if we just have the presentation on the screen. So this chapter, let's just straight, go straight into the chapter and the deep dive into it. So the first part that we think is pretty simple and we need to know is that text, uh, let's just say we are writing something in the computer. Like for example, in this presentation, how does it get store, stored into our computer? Of course, as you study, the computer uses binary. But in between the binary and the text, we have a method of conversion that is the ASCII and Unicode. So ASCII is a standard code character set that you could call it that consists of seven bit code that each represents a letter, number, and characters found on the standard keyboard together with 32 control codes. So 32 control codes will be your control key, shift key, calf lock, all of them. And then all of the seven bit uh, also represent the letters and numbers and all of that stuff. So uppercase and lowercase values will have different ASCII values and each subsequent value in a, uh, ASCII will have, uh, will be, uh, every value will be subsequent. For example, let's just say, let's give in this example, A and B, it, the A has value 97 in ASCII. So the B will have 98 and C will have 99 and so on. They will be going in order. So if you add one to an ASCII value, you're then technically going to the next value. You don't need to memorize the whole ASCII table just because of the fact that these are subsequent. So in the exam, you could just go over it, but you need to memorize some of them. For example, zero is at 48. So you could go 0, 48, 149, 2 is 40, uh, 50, and 3 is 51, 4 is 52, and so on. A, capital A is 65, and a smaller A is, uh, young, lowercase lower A is 97. So you could just memorize them and you could just go ahead and one by one and just keep them in your mind. And just keep that in mind that as it is a seven bit code, it will use only one byte to store the value. Well, going on ahead, when the ASCII values of, is converted to binary, you can see the six bit is changing from one to zero when going from the lowercase to uppercase character, and the rest remains the same. So when you're dealing in binary, you could use this method to convert from uh, the capital uh, to lowercase or uppercase to lowercase to upper or uppercase to uh, lowercase. So that could be done. Although I wouldn't recommend you to go into binary and stuff. If you have an option to not go into binary, just go with the basic method of 0 at 48, a capital A at 65, and lowercase a at 97. This is the ASCII table. Of course, we don't need to memorize that, but just for an example, like capital A is at 10. In this, uh, sorry, capital A is the x value, sorry. For example, the capital A is at 41, and then you get uh, so 41 is really 65 decimal, and 97 is a small, lowercase a, and all of the stuff, zero is that, and all of the stuff. So you got definitely get the point what I'm saying. Uh, zero is that actually we said yes, zero is at uh, 48. So that is matching the values, but you don't need to memorize this table. This is just showing this is just to show you the fact that these are subsequent. Character of zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven is subsequent, and the lowercase and the uppercase letters are subsequent. Talking about the text now, we also have another method that is the Unicode. So let's just say we have multiple languages. Let's just say we've got French, we've got Spanish, and those languages have some characters which are not in English. And this ASCII, as you can see, is 127 characters, and that is the maximum amount of characters a byte can hold. So we use the Unicode for that, which has 128 values. First 128 values seem to ask me, but after 128 values, it moves on to the four bit system, four byte system. Before that, the three, first three bytes are turned off and the fourth byte is used for the characters. But after that, it uses the four bytes per character, allowing multiple languages more directly store. To represent a text in binary, a computer uses a character set, and which is a collection of characters and corresponding binary codes. So the previous character set for ASCII, and this is the Unicode, which is the second character set. 
and this is basically all about that basically you will mostly be uh, they will mostly be asking you the difference between ascii and unigo why you should use unigo why you should uh, use ascii much not too much than that sometimes they will also especially in paper 2 you might have to convert between ascii values uh, from a regular value to an ascii value but it wouldn't be that tough so now going on to the sound we have sound of course is an analog value as we as if you have studied physics you would know so it has to be converted to digital form so for that the actually what happens is that the sound travels in waves so waves have to be waves have amplitudes as we studied in physics if you have studied physics if not if we could just uh, shift to the whiteboard i will just give you a short example just to make it easier to be able to understand so let's just say this is where the sound is coming from this is our uh, let's just say a human speaking this point this is how the sound waves would come up this i'm not going into the physics of that i'm just representing the values over here so this would be the amplitude of the sound so what actually happens for the microphone uh, is that if we could go back to the presentation it measures the amplitude at set time intervals so and then each of the uh, calculated value is uh, put into digital form and then it is put into binary and then we we are able to store sound so if we could just go back to the whiteboard so what happens is that let's just say this is a this is time at this way so every single second let's just say that the microphone is not very good in calculate uh, saving the uh, amplitude value at a very low rate so it will take the amplitude at this point it will take the amplitude at this point it will take the amplitude at this point it will take the amplitude here here and here and then it will store the amplitude values within it and each of the amplitude value would be then in storing the computer and between the amplitude values there will be approximations taken that this will be a straight line and then this will be a straight line and this will be a straight line and so on but approximation were taken later on but this way each of this value is stored into the computer and the computer knows that okay this is the value this is the value and is able to capture the sound through through the waves by taking values at a constant rate so if we could now go ahead with the presentation uh, we could go ahead with the sound topic so sampling rate is the fact that how i'll just go into sampling rate first and into sampling resolution sampling rate is amount of number of samples taken per second so let's just say there is one sample taken per second so one is a sampling rate the lesser the sampling rate the less accurate the sound because you have the le lesser the amount of estimations uh, you have the more the amount of estimation because you have le lesser the number of uh, readings in between uh, the in between a set of time so between a reading you have too much time that you're leaving because the sampling rate is low so that time has to be estimated in between the sampling values so that causes your uh, sampling rate of the sound sample that means the sampling rate causes your estimations to be very high for the values now going for the sampling resolution is very simple that how many bits a read sample is being taken so let's just say a sample takes 10 bits and other sample takes 20 bits of course with 20 bits you could add more detail into the sound data and that would allow the accuracy because the more detail you are able to add you even able to add the minute values of the amplitude the more deep in deep you are about to about to go the more clear the sound the more accurate the sound you would go to the clearer would be your sampling rate and the more accurate would be for the sampling resolution but both of these things as a higher sampling rate would cause too many too more uh, more amount of reading and higher sampling resolution would cause the number of bits you read per sample this increasing this would increase the your memory usage so if you are dealing with memory issues you wouldn't be increasing this too much but if you are not dealing with memory issues and you want an accurate sound you will be increasing these two things and in the given in the paper you get this type of question like would you uh, like if this is the case should you increase it or sh what should you do so there were two options you either increase it or you don't decrease it if you increase it then the case would be you will be increasing in the case that you have memory and you need accurate sound you will be increasing the sampling resolution or the sampling rate but if you don't have a lot of memory and the sound quality doesn't matter a lot you would be decreasing it now on to the image the third part 
there are only two types of images bitmap and vector bitmap is only studied in igcse and level syllabus vector is studied in a levels so bitmap is made out of pixels and a bitmap image is stored in the computer as a series of binary numbers so every image for example even if this image as you see in this case this is made out of pixel and if you look at a computer screen and you go into depth you will be able to see the fact that for example if you use a microscope or well, not even a microscope if you use a magnifying glass you will see that there are tiny pixels in your computer screen so those tiny a cube or cube style of things are called pixels and those are represented in the computer so the color depth is one of the concepts here so let's just say every single pixel represents a color the more the pixels you have in a computer screen the more clear in the image you can you are you're not basically seeing but the more clear the image you can see so every single pixel has a responsibility to only show one color the number of bits that could represent uh, could be seen using each color is called the the number of bits that are used to show each color is called the color depth so let's just say there are eight bits used to show the each color there will be 256 colors called eight two raised to power eight is eight 256 the same means that one bit is you use for one color so that would only be showing white and black so increasing the color depth increases the size of the file and storing image because you're using more bits however you could have a very clearer image and you could also have very true colors rather than going into approximation of colors and then going for the image resolution image resolution is how many pixels are in that image so let's just say there is going to be 4096 pixels in the width uh, in the length and 3072 pixels in the width so if you want to give detail to a photo you have to give it a high image resolution so that you are able to even capture the minute detail and if the image resolution is less, it will just take a, a big part of the image as a one color and that will not give you the detail. It could become blurry and fizzy when you zoom into it, even if it's very clear at one point, you will see that the image has become pixelated and you will see the differences in between colors. Even if you take an image and you keep on zooming on it, you will see at a moment that you see the pixels, each color having its own space. So once again, the higher the image resolution, the higher the memory. So once again, the same thing as sound, you have you can get those type of questions where they ask you that, well, you have a computer where you have an image and you have to use it in memory and that kind of stuff. So you can just look at that example. Also, uh, I think that there should also be some. Uh, can you go back to the first slide? Yeah, I think there should be some more emphasis on the color depth because a lot of the questions require calculations of those kind of store. So remember, uh, let's say if they are, uh, let's say three bits for each color. So the possible number of colors possible for, to that image would be two to the power three. That let's say, for example, uh, if we're talking about, let's say two bits, right? So the possible combinations, we need to look at the possible combinations of it, okay? It could be zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. And in that case, there are four combinations. That's basically two to the power two. So that's like the reason why we do uh, two to the power of the number. So like, let's say if we say that there's an image that has 16 colors. So we know that each image would be represented by four bits. But yeah. Yeah, well, definitely we needed to know that. Thank you very much, Ramesh. I think I really missed that point and that was very important because they asked that a lot. Even they, I even had to give it in my CIE, which I gave. So it's a very important point, and I think you should be knowing that. Now, moving on to the workout part. Now, we were just answering a few questions. I have only have one question for this case, which I, which, because this has not been asked too much in the previous IGCSC and O level syllabus, but in the new IGCSC and O level syllabus, this will be asked a lot. So I have this one question from the specimen paper, the new specimen paper. And we'll be having you make sure to answer this one. Sure. So uh, the first question asks that the Unicode character set is used to represent text that is typed into a computer. And so basically, they're asking us what is meant by a character set. So in this case, honestly, this is like a very basic definition. So I would recommend you should memorize it. So one thing for sure is that they have, uh, they're basically characters and symbols that are represented in the computer system, right? And at each character, 
is assigned a unique binary value in the computer. So these two points, I think uh, this is like a very, very common definition that we should know. Uh, so that would be the answer for 7a. And if uh, uh, Abdullah would love to do the second question, I would like to see what it is. I would do well, the thing is that one disadvantage of Unicode character set is that it takes more space. Why does it take more space? So the answer was simple, would be very simple to that, that Unicode uses four bytes and ASCII uses one byte. One by four obviously will take eight bits less storage space, but Unicode would use a four by for every character. That would mean uh, four times more space for every single character, taking up more storage space. So we're just simplifying it up with the fact that once one by four ASCII, four by four Unicode. And we even have the marking schemes here. So the first part, all characters and symbols that can be represented by a computer system, each character and symbol is assigned a unique Mark value, which is of each mark for the character set definition. And each character is encoded using more bits, that is for the more storage phase, safe phase part, which is what we explained. Um, so your mate will be scoring the first two marks, and I'll be scoring the mark if I'll be giving the, those answers that we have told you in the exam. And even if you write anything that defines the meaning of this marking scheme. Great. So yeah, thank you all for tuning in and we hope that you had a great understanding of the concept. You can get hold of the notes of the, on the Znotes website for this specific chapter and our social media handles are on display. So connect with us if you have any questions and feel free to drop any on the comment section and see you in the next upload. Thank you.